Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our journey into pointers and I have a new example here. Now up until this point we've been learning about pointers. We've been using the uh, mechanism where we create an integer, we initialize it to some value, and then we create an integer pointer and then we set it to the address of this variable, the regular variable. So what this looks like in memory is we have p pointing to x. Now this isn't really that useful because if I just wanted to have access to a integer then I would just use a regular uh, integer variable. But there is another mechanism that we can use which is actually called allocating memory on the heap. Now before I tell you what the heap is, let's talk about the other uh, type of memory that you can allocate from and that's called the stack. So there are these two things, one of them is called the stack and the other one's called the heap. And let's see how they're different. So. Um, in this case, in the, in the case on the left, both these uh, variables, the integer and the pointer, are allocated. P and X are both allocated on the stack. So what is P? P is a pointer. What is X? X is an integer. Now what is the stack? Well, consider it like a region of memory and essentially when we allocate memory from the stack, it gets freed when the variable goes out of scope. What's scope? So scope, let me just kind of move this up a little bit here. So essentially, this is the open brace. That, that starts a scope. So if in here, if I was to write this code, and say int x, then if I close the scope with the closing brace, then this goes out of scope. That means that this variable x doesn't exist after this line, okay? Because it's gone out of scope. Now this applies to functions, this, apply, this can apply to for loops, this can apply to um, if statements, any time where you have opening and closing braces, when you declare something inside those braces like this, it's getting allocated on the stack. And it will be freed. Now when I say freed, I'm specifically talking about the memory. The memory of this variable will be freed or let go when it goes out of scope. In other words, when you hit the closing brace. Now this is true for, pretty, you know, like if for example we were in int main, this is true for pretty much everything. So when, we, you, you know, when you're in int main and you have your very last line, right, which would probably be return zero, and then you have your closing brace. Well, when that closing brace hits, any variables that you have allocated on the stack by simply declaring them like this get free. Okay, So you don't have to worry about memory management for the stack. However, what's the heap? So you can allocate memory from the heap using new. And we've done that here on line 10. Now, the difference here is that when you allocate memory from the heap, you have to manually release it. It doesn't get released automatically, even if your program ends. So therefore, every time we call new and we allocate memory for our program, we need to also call delete. That will free the memory or release it. Now remember, 
where are we getting this memory from? Obviously, it's the computer's memory. But it's the operating system that is responsible for determining who, which programs get what memory. The operating system knows what parts of the memory are already allocated and cannot be used by anything else. And the operating system knows when or has to be notified when you're not going to be using a certain area of memory anymore. Because the reason for this is that the operating system keeps a pool of free memory. In other words, memory that can be doled out or handed out to programs that request memory. So essentially, let's go to the program here. This line here is a request to the operating system. It's saying, please give us the amount of memory required to store one integer. And notice in this situation, there's nothing else. So P is now assigned. By the way, let's back up here for a second. What is P? It's an integer pointer. So what does it store? It stores an address. That means this must new int must return an address. And we will assign that address to P. So what does this look like over here? Well, it, it still kind of looks like if I kind of go over here and I just draw a little thing. So if this is on the heap now and we're using new, we still created P. Now be very certain here, where was P created? Notice we're going int star P. So P is actually the pointer itself is on the stack. But it points to something that's on the heap. So the P pointer is on the stack. Now, why is this important? And this is on the heap. Notice before we had the variable x that also referred to this thing. Well, now we have nothing that else that refers to this. So for example, if I now do line 12, you can see I go dereference P and make it equal to 5. OK, that puts a 5 in here. Okay, And then I can dereference it and print out the 5 on line 13. OK, that's, that's great. But the reason why this is dangerous is, watch, I'll show you a very simple memory leak. So a memory leak, memory leak is bad. So watch how I'll do it. I'll say int star p, and I'll say p is equal to new uh, int, and then I will close the scope. Now, when I close the scope, what goes what goes out of scope? So look what I've done here. This is really bad. This doesn't go out of scope. This still exists. The, the well, actually, I didn't even set it to five yet. So I'll go. Oops, I can't do it. Uh, I can't do it here. I have to do it below. So I'll go star p equals five. And then I'll, I'll set it out of scope, OK? But essentially, now what's happening is the p is, goes out of scope, so the p is gone. If we now, after the closing scope, try going delete p, it's not going to work. It's going to fail, because it's going to say, what are you talking about? p doesn't exist anymore. So this is super bad. That's a memory leak right there. Um, and I'll show you another example of it, okay? Um, but essentially, we need to make sure that the pointer P exists long enough until we delete it, okay? Now, what does deleting do? This is a really interesting discussion. And so let's draw this picture again because picture over there looks a little convoluted. So let's have P pointing to our box again. And we got a 5 in there. Nothing else can refer to this, num to this integer 5. The only way we can access that 5 is through the pointer by dereferencing it. So question, now what does delete P do? Well, a lot of students 
wrongly believe that it deletes the five. That's not true. The five is still there. Um, actually, well, it depends. Depends, but not, not necessarily. Okay? It depends on a few things. Uh, it depends on how the heap treats free memory. It de also depends on the destructor of the data type you're calling delete on. Okay? So things could be slightly different. And you'll see when I run this program, in fact, uh, I'm pretty sure it ends up wiping out the five. But that's not the purpose of delete. You're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed of anything after you call delete p. So what does it do? And here's the answer. Ready? Let's think about what the opposite does. What does new int do? What does new do? So new is actually making a request to the operating system and saying, can you please give me four bytes of, in this case, because it's an integer, four bytes of memory that belongs to me. Now when I say me, I'm talking from the perspective of the program. Okay, the process running in the operating system. Now, there's no reason, that, that there could be a reason why it would fail, but usually it's not going to fail. I mean, if you can't allocate four bytes of memory, you've got bigger problems <laughs> than running C++. Um, if your computer is completely exhausted of memory, then that line could potentially fail calling new int. But we're not going to deal with that right now. Let's just say your computer has, well, it's kind of ridiculous to say your computer doesn't have four bytes of free memory. So let's assume that it succeeds. And what has happened now? Well, if you think of it, if you think of this location as that location in memory, now, that location in memory is exclusively given to your program to do as it wishes. No other program may access this memory location. Remember, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of processes running on the computer, all having their own memory locations. So, what happens when you call delete? Well. Essentially, all that happens is you're, it's a message to the operating system saying, I don't need this location anymore. You can have it back. And so the operating system puts it back into the pool of free memory. Now, if that's the case, then what does this do? What does this do? Look what I'm doing here. I'm doing bad things here. W why is this bad? Well, this is a read. Okay, I'm reading what's in the memory, but now that memory doesn't belong to me anymore. Why doesn't it belong to me? Because I've already called, just ignore this line right now. I'm gonna actually, uh, let me just delete it so it doesn't even distract you. So on line 14, I'm calling delete, and it's essentially telling the operating system that whatever that, point, that pointer, wherever that pointer points to is not mine anymore. Now, just to, be, just to be clear, let's go back to the, nothing has happened to P, okay? So let's pretend for a minute that this memory location is, okay, so P has an address, right? Let's say, let's pretend the address was uh, 2461. I'm just making up a stupid memory address. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to make it 64 bits long or I'm going to be here forever. But let's just say it's 2461. Then that number still is, um, that's what this returned, okay? That number is still stored in the pointer, okay? So just to prove that to you, I can even, watch this, I could even do this. Let's print out here, let's go um, see out P, okay? And then after I delete it, notice I'm gonna get the same thing if I go see out P, well, we haven't run it yet, so let's try it. Okay, so um, let's just comment this out for a sec. Actually, let's, yeah, let's comment this out for a second. 
and let's comment this out, and let's comment this out. Okay, let's run this, and let's see what we get. Oops. Okay, so there you go. So when I run this, that's the memory location. It, it wasn't my made up number of 2461, but as you can see, it's quite a long number, right? 64 bit memory address. And there's my five. That's when I dereferenced it. And then after I print it out, I delete it, and then I print P again. My point here to, is to show you that after I've deleted it, P still exists because I'm not removing the memory location that P stores. Remember, P is allocated on the stack. Okay, that's not affected. So what is happening here? Well, that memory location, after I call delete, now, oops, I actually meant it, not meant, yeah. So this memory location now doesn't belong to me anymore. All right, so let's try this again. And this time, um, let's try to uncomment these guys. And let's see what happens. So really, this, this should be, this is totally fine, OK? This is fine. I'm not doing anything wrong here by printing P. Because remember, P is allocated on line 9, or I should say is created on line 9 on the stack. And P hasn't gone out of scope. And as you, as you saw when I ran this, it printed the, the address. However, line 19 is bad. And the reason why line 19 is bad is because I'm reading. That's a read. So I'm dereferencing that pointer. I'm, telling, I'm saying, tell me what's in there. The problem with this is that I don't own that memory anymore because I've called delete. So in other words, if I show you like from the picture's perspective, once again, I know I keep making a circle around this, but I don't own that anymore. So if I, I'm trying to access it here on line 19, and that's undefined behavior. I'm not sure what could happen. In fact, I could get a segmentation fault in Linux and in Windows. I think it's called uh, protection error or something like that. Um, essentially, it's a crash. Now, why would that occur? Well. I'll explain to you. Between line 15 and line 19, if another, so once I, once I, once line 15 executes, now I don't own that memory anymore. So watch this. What if another process, let's say Firefox or something or some other program, after I delete it, says, oh, I need some, uh, I need some memory. And then the operating system says, oh, OK, you know what? Well, this is just freed. Uh, I, can, I can give you this. So it gives it to Firefox. Now, when I try to dereference it, it's going to crash. Because now I don't own that anymore. Firefox does. Now, what if it doesn't give it to another program? What if it's just sitting there and it's owned by nobody? Then guess what happens? Nothing. But at any point in time, so this will work, and so will even this. This is even worse. That's that's so. This one's a, so. I, I put it here. This this is like reading. This is like uh, this is this is reading the memory location, right? But this is even worse. This is actually writing to the memory location. I'm changing the contents from a five to a four. Let's see what happens when I run this. And after that, I'm reading it again. Let's see if it's a four. Okay, so let's execute. And there it is. Look, I'm reading it, and it's a zero. And then afterwards, I'm setting it equal to four and printing it out, and it's a four. Holy guacamole! I've done. I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy for doing this because I'm actually writing to and reading from memory that I don't own anymore. Let's see if let's see if I run it again. Is it going to crash? Nope. Let's see if I run it again. Is it going to crash? Nope. Now listen, I don't have any other things really going on with my computer. If I had a lot of other things happening, a lot of memory being allocated, perhaps this would crash. 
Now this is a really bad thing because it could crash, but we don't know. It, it's kind of like a, uh, it's totally undefined behavior. We don't know what's gonna happen. Now, it's, now you might say, oh, but it's working, it's fine. Yeah, oh yeah, there it is, there, it worked again, right? Like, we're totally fine. No, you're not. This is extremely bad. So how can we prevent this from happening? So just to be clear, this is not a memory leak, but what we're doing is we're accessing memory that we don't own, which could result in a crash or segmentation fault of our program at any moment. We don't know if it is or it's not. But it's not a memory leak, and we'll do an example of a memory leak next. Um, however, what can we do to prevent this from happening? Now when I say prevent this, it's like preventing ourselves from being stupid. Well, there is a solution to this. And the answer is this. Now, there are three different things you can set p equal to after you delete it. One of them is zero. The other one is null, and that's like a throwback to C. So that's kind of like the old way of doing it. This used to be, um, I've done this a lot, and this is OK as well. This will work, setting it to zero. But the new way and the recommended way of doing it is setting it to null PTR, null pointer. OK? Um, so if I, if I run this now, watch what's going to happen. Ready? So command terminated. Now listen, let's go back here. By the way, this is the zero that's printing out. Now you don't actually see what's happening. So I've got to pop out of um, my terminal here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is, um, in fact, let me just open a new terminal. OK, so I'm going to run it from the command line here on the right. You can see it. And so notice now I get a segmentation fault. Now, let's think about what's happening here. First it prints 0. Sorry, sorry first, first it prints um, p. That's the address of p. Then we dereference it. We get the 5. Then we delete p. We set p equal to the null pointer. OK? And then, now null pointer, by the way, like I said, this is the same as setting it equal to, oops, uh-oh. That's the same as, as, as just going p equals 0. For me, because um, uh, I learned C++ a while ago, and so I'm used to saying uh, p equals 0 to set it equal to the null pointer. Now C++ standard, uh, it's better to use null PTR like that. Anyway, anyways. Um, by the way, the reason why that's better is because there's no confusion in a function call. Let's say, for example, if you had a, f uh, a function call, and um, let's say you had a function foo, and if you had, let's say, um, just to say you had an int pointer, right, that it accepted, or you had uh, an int, then if you make p equal to 0, then 0 is considered an integer, but null ptr is considered a pointer. Okay, So it's better to use null ptr, but like I said, I'm just used to using 0 more. OK, let's go back here. And why did it crash? Well, the reason it crashed is because of line 20. What I tried to do there is I tried to dereference a null pointer. And that will always, always, 100% of the time, cause a segmentation fault. It'll always cause your program to crash. And you might say, is that a good thing? Actually, it is. It's a good thing your program crashed, because your program will always crash in that case, and you want it to. You want it to crash, because what's worse than crashing is if it crashes only sometimes. That's bad, because that's a very horrible bug to have. Imagine if you're testing your program and you think it works, but it might fail sometimes. 
that's worse. I'd rather have my program fail all the time if I know that I've done something wrong and I have done something wrong here. I'm dereferencing a memory location that doesn't belong to me anymore. And here I'm even writing to it. Okay? So none of this is going to work if I have this line after I delete it. So this becomes actually recommended and standard practice for dealing with raw pointers is after you delete the pointer, you should set it equal to zero or set it equal to the null pointer. That way, if you ax, even if you're like, let's say for example, working in a team and somebody dereferences that deleted pointer, boom, your program's gonna crash and you're gonna know someone did something wrong. Does that make sense? Okay, so I've made a really nasty little function here called foo and foo will create an integer pointer and it'll assign it to a new integer that's allocated on the heap and then I'll dereference it and assign the value of 1 to that integer and then look what I do <laughs> the function goes out of scope and I don't call delete now why is this bad well because Q which is the pointer was allocated in the stack in that function and when the function goes out of scope Q's gone so now <clears throat> there's no way for me to delete that memory after that function finishes so that's called a memory leak <laughs> this is this is a memory leak function and that's bad um, but I notice I'm not calling the function so it's not going to happen I'm not calling it just yet. I've also commented out these lines here. So let's run this program once again. And obviously nothing's, nothing bad's gonna happen at this point, okay? The, the zero that I'm getting there is um, right here. So that's not bad, that's not bad at all. I'm just printing out P after assigning it to null. P is on the stack though, everything's fine, okay? Now, how do I know everything's fine? Well, let me show you something. So what I wanted to show you is there is a program. Now, in Linux system, it's called Valgrind. And it, it's actually, it'll analyze, it'll run the program, and it'll analyze what memory is allocated and freed, and it'll actually tell you if your program is leaking memory. So let's run this. There it is, okay. And it says here that all heap blocks were free, no leaks are possible, okay. So that means this program as it stands on the left is A-OK, -okay. all right. Now what I'd like to do is, for the educational purposes, I'm going to cause a memory leak here. So let's now call foo here. So I'm calling the function foo now, which is definitely going to cause a memory leak because I'm not calling delete. Remember, every time you call new, you have to call delete. So I did it for p, but I'm not doing it for q. Let's see what happens when I run this program now. So I've saved it. Oops. There we go. And we got to recompile it now. So g++. And let's go, I think it was 1.cc and then uh, 1 there. Okay, so no warnings. Look at no warnings at all. And now let's do the Valgrind thing. Let's, let's try it. So notice <laughs> the leak summary for Valgrind says definitely lost 4 bytes in 1 blocks. So we did lose memory in this case. That's a memory leak. So if you think about this, you might say, whoa, like, uh, is, this, is this super bad? Like, how bad is this? Well, it turns out that since the process is now over, the, the operating system is smart enough to detect, to say, wait a minute, this process owned that memory, but this process is not alive anymore. So... I'm just going to clean up after you. So the operating system should, I say should, be able to clean up that memory that my program leaked. 
Why? That's because my program ended and the program is now terminated. Okay? However, and here comes the, here comes the catch. What if you write a program that's not supposed to end? For example, a daemon or a web server or some program that's supposed to run 24-7 like, like a security camera or there's lots of programs that are not supposed to end. Okay? Well, in that case, if your program has a memory leak in it, the operating system's never going to be able to clean up after you because the program's never going to terminate. And if the leak, if it continually leaks memory, even just four bytes, then eventually if your program or if your computer is on for long enough and that program is continually leaking memory, guess what? Your, your computer is going to run out of memory. And the next time you go new, it's going to say, I can't do it anymore because you've exhausted all the memory. I don't have any more memory to give you. And then your operating system can crash or your application, whatever it is, could crash. That's really bad. And, and um, so that's why it's so important to be able to detect these errors and fix them to prevent memory leaks.